What is up everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up my swine and run Windows games on this new Windows emulator. So let's get started. Now before we begin, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to my channel, it really helps me grow so I can keep on bringing content for you guys like this. Currently I'm running Rise of the Tomb Raider on here, this is the very beginning of the game and running at a pretty steady FPS so far, so let's see how it performs later down the line. So let's begin the setup. There are a few things we need to download in order to get Mice One working on our device. So the first thing you need to do is navigate to the link down in the description and we're going to download the APK. Here on the releases, you should see the most recent version. At the time of this video, I can see the version that is 0.2, but by the time you're watching this video, it's possible and you version is out so just make sure to download that once application is downloaded then we need to download the root fs so again navigate to the link down in the description in here you're going to navigate to the most recent releases and you're going to be downloading this one make sure to download the root fs arc64.rat this file is over a gigabyte so just be patient with the download now that it's downloaded we can close the browser we're going to navigate to our files and in here i'm going to install MiceWine. and once it's installed open the app here we need to allow access to all files you're going to press on continue and now we need to import the root fs file that we just downloaded so in my case it's under download and here you're going to see MiceWine root fs arc 64.rat so we're going to be opening this file it's going to extract the file so it may take a while after it's done it's going to give you like a little walkthrough of the application so in this case it's going to tell us about the shortcuts the settings browsing and opening files and this is just information about MiceWine. now you can see that out of the box MiceWine has created a container desktop for us so before we open the container desktop we're going to be looking at a few of the settings and we're going to have a walkthrough of them so first under the settings section we're going to see a couple different settings for wine sound display drivers and environment settings if we open the wine settings here you're going to see that you have a few options such as enabling wine services the cpu affinity which basically how many cores are going to be used while running the applications and so on so for now i'm going to leave everything on here as is and we're going to navigate to sound settings in here i can see that we're using pulse audio so clicking on the options i can see that we have sles and aa audio so we're just going to leave it as is for display settings we can see the display mode is 69 the resolution is 1280 times 720 and we can see the ram counter and we're also able to disable a few other settings we're going to be leaving this as is for now we're going to look at the driver settings now in the driver settings we're able to change the renderer so we can use one d3d or d dxvk we're going to leave dxvk here we can change the dxvk version so for here i'm going to put 2.4 also for vkd 3d version i'm going to be leaving it as 2.13 and we're also going to leave enable the manga hut because we're using the manga hut i'm not going to be selecting any dxvk hut preset so i'm going to leave that as is here we can change the wine version if we want to but i think that we're going to leave the most recent version which is wine 10 as for the environment settings you should be able to add any environment variables that you want for now we're going to be leaving them as is now under the main settings i see we have a controller mapper in here i currently have my a retro pocket 5 controller which is marked as xbox wireless controller i can see here that this is marked as default so we're going to click on edit in here we need to bind all controls to the default controller for my swine so if you do have a physical controller make sure to map your input in here i'm going to be doing that as well and if you don't have a gamepad here you can configure also a virtual controller mapper so if you tap on here and click on edit the default you're going to see a black screen if you swipe on the left of the screen you're going to see add button and add virtual access so if you're running this on an android device that you don't have a controller feel free to modify this as you please we also have a box 64 preset manager in this case we're able to modify the presets to work for each specific game here in the settings we can see the box 64 manager which we can manage our box versions but in our case we only have one which is box 0.33 here we can also change our drivers. I'm going to be leaving it with the Mesa Turnip driver 25.0. That should be the settings for here. Now, one thing I did notice about MiceWine, in the file manager, we see three different folders, C, D, and Z. C will be our computer C drive. D is our internal storage folder. I don't see a way for me to access my SD card on here. And here we also have the Z drive, which this seems to be just wine stuff. I don't know if there is a way for me to access my SD card as of now. Let's boot up the desktop container and see what happens here we just booted up my swine and i can see again like i mentioned c d and z drive i wonder if there's a way for me to select my sd card on here one more thing before we begin anything here let's actually go to start dx test and for direct x9 just open any of those here let's open the sphere we want to make sure that the graphics driver is working so we're able to see this right here this is how we know that our games are going to render correctly and we know that the dx version is working fine I'm going to be exiting the desktop for now so now that we have exited now i can see that my swine somehow is recognizing my sd card as an e drive so this is actually a really good thing because i have all my games in here so let's boot up the container again now my e drive is showing here that is really interesting it was not shown before but now it is okay so before we launch another game i'm going to navigate to my settings box 64 preset settings and i'm going to create a new preset and let's name this one performance 
I'm going to edit this preset here that I have created and I'm going to add the following parameters on here. So strong mem a one, fast nan disabled, fast round enabled, safe flex two, big block two, strong mem one, weak barrier one, forward 1024. And I think these are the settings for Tomb Raider. Now we're going to boot up the container desktop again. We're going to navigate back again to the drive where you have your games which in my case is in the E drive and in my ROMs folder here, I have a Windows folder that have all my games. I'm going to select Rise of the Tomb Raider and I'm going to launch the game. Here I'm going to select the options and I'm going to configure a few of the settings for Tomb Raider. And let's launch this game. So we're not getting that good of a performance on here. I can see that the game is FPS is fluctuating a lot and the game crashed on us. It could be due to the resolution. So again, let's exit the container and let's change the resolution for this. Let's put 960 times 540 and let's put it up again. Let's open Rise of the Tomb Raider. Okay, I can see that the performance is a little bit better now that we have changed the resolution. Now that the game is booting, let's start the game and see how it performs in game. I am not sure if you guys are able to hear the sound coming from the game. So right now there's like a cutting going on, but it's uh, definitely not great. Has worse performance than Wind later. Yeah, it seems that the FPS is definitely inconsistent on here. That is not too bad, but we gotta see once we're actually in game to see the performance. And the game crashed on us. So it seems either this game is too demanding for Mice Wine, maybe the configurations are not correct. I am not sure. I can tell you that Mice Wine overall seems to be pretty buggy. Not as good as stable as Win Later. It definitely seems that it definitely needs more improvements. However, it is really nice to see that we have more options other than Win Later on here. So here we have Tomb Raider, it booted up. It seems that it probably didn't like the Android screen recorded on here. I can see that it's performing at a 15 FPS, 16 FPS, it's not too great. Also for some reason the controller mapping is not working on here. I tried to use the virtual gamepad and I don't seem to be able to configure that correctly on here. But so far I can see that the game is running on here, which is a pretty good sign because not all the games run right off the box. This game I couldn't get it to work on Win later right away, but this one with the settings that I have enabled, it seems to be working pretty decent. So so I got some of the mappings to work. This is really, really frustrating. Yeah, so even trying to map the controls here, it's a little bit weird. I don't seem to be able to get it right, but at least we're able to move a little bit. Just move forward. Oh, and the game just crashed on us. The game is definitely unstable and it's really hard to tell, really hard to map the controls. Maybe it will be easier to use the on-screen controls, but then again, it's still a work in progress. So who knows how this is going to perform later down the line. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.